Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Gopi Krishnamurthy. I'm a senior specialist or principal solution architect with Bombardier Transportation. Um, I joined Bombardier a couple of years back in 2015 uh, when we had this transformation initiative where the company was taking a new turn towards uh, how they want to structure uh, IS and how they want to bring their products. So primarily, I will focus today uh, more on uh, how our digitalization journey takes place and how we are more focusing on uh, self-service uh, data analytics. Yeah? And that, that will be our, the path to self-service data analytics. Yeah? That will be the core of uh, uh, my speech. Uh, there will be slides there are which are a little bit technical, but I will not uh, go into the technical details, uh, assuming this talk is more for uh, intermediate uh, audience. Uh, but if you have some questions, feel free to have it, and at the end, if there is time, we can talk about it, or I'm available outside, you can, we, can make, uh, uh, we can make a short talk on it. Cool, let's start with uh, who are we. So I think most of you know Bombardier Transportation. So in, in, in short, uh, we make trains. Yeah? That's a cool job, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. And, and our sister company makes flights or planes. So that's even cooler. Uh, but is it still cool? Yeah? In this age, I think people expect more from, from the industry. Yeah? So yes, it's a, it's a cool job. But at the end, uh, the end customers at the moment are looking beyond what we call for as a traditional manufacturing. Yeah? So it, it's no longer that you produce a, a, a traditional rolling stock or a, a, um, a train or a U-bahn, uh, but people are now looking at the next gen uh, transportation. And this is basically our, um, our transformation journey. So how do we go ahead with our next generation uh, transportation? Yeah? So this is a very high-level advertisement slide for, for, for my company. Uh, so we, we provide the broadest portfolio in rail industry, not only in Europe, but also across the uh, globe. There is a Twitter handle as well as the uh, sites. There are a lot of opportunities available. Those who are interested, please go to our sites and look for, for them. So, um, so we start with uh, uh, who are we and where are we moving to and how. Yeah? So, where are we moving to? So we are moving to giving a customer a next, genera uh, next generation uh, travel experience. What does this mean? That this means that uh, you are always connected. Uh, you get uh, the uh, um, uh, modern day uh, apps in your, uh, in your mobile, and you are always connected with uh, high speed internet. Uh, of course, everybody uh, focuses about safety and capacity, which gives us more profitability. But at the same time, we also have to focus on innovation. Yeah, if you want to compete in this uh, industry, as you see already, that there is a big takeovers from, uh, uh, or not just takeovers, also uh, consolidation in this industry taking place from our Asian and uh, uh, competitors as well. Oh, um, so and how? So this is basically uh, my, my my talk about. So we are uh, planning to utilize the big data uh, stack, basically to bring in predictive analytics and uh, data science. So focus uh, on this speech would be more about two use cases: uh, one on the technical ability, uh, how we bring in our uh, uh, our big data stack, and uh, how self-service is important, and uh, how certain um, security and the compliance requirements made us to think. About self-service and not just depend on the core IT backend systems. And the second use case would be more about a data science lab, where I talk about a business problem and how we were able to handle this. Yeah. Uh, of course, there is uh, from the manufacturing side, uh, we have to go for a smart automation, which is not covered. By, uh, but this is uh, 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 this is, this needs a foundational um, uh, foundational um, uh, capabilities to be enabled by our uh, big data and predictive analytics stack. Uh, at the same time, we are also partnering with the uh, internal and external customers, basically with the startups, to bring in some uh, uh, next-gen apps that could be integrated to our uh, train systems. Uh, and also, we work, uh, we are, we plan to work with the universities. There are some talks going on, which I will probably show in our uh, next slide. So what does it mean to us? So let's start, start with what does it mean to our uh, trains? So basically, we want to provide uh, uh, big data capabilities and also give us an uh, open uh, APIs to our uh, customers and partners. For example, uh, Netflix can, uh, uh, can connect to our platform, and then based on this uh, user who is traveling uh, will get, OK, you were seeing last, or you are awaiting Game of Thrones, or you are awaiting your favorite 
um, uh, uh, sitcom, and uh, basically you can uh, it, it it gives you the suggestions, and you can uh, go ahead uh, with viewing it during the period of journey that you have. Of course, this means there needs to be a uh, next gen uh, next generation uh, networks. Uh, and uh, there needs to be some kind of an analytics uh, uh, that needs to be done for our trains. And then, of course, we have uh, data science. So uh, the ones that are highlighted is big data and data science, just to showcase that I'm, I'm not going to touch the other parts now, although some of the uh, slides will, uh, will have these uh, captions uh, embedded in them. The second is what, what it means to our uh, productivity. So the, uh, 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 here we talk about Industry 4.0, uh, how to bring in IOTs. I know sensors and robotics have uh, already been integral part, yeah, but not in case of uh, traditional train manufacturing systems. So basically how to use uh, robotics to uh, automate our shop floor activities. Uh, and finally, paperless and lean factories, yeah. And what does this mean to IT? Yeah? So, because I'm from the uh, IT department, uh, which we now call it as digitalization uh, department or program, uh, where we talk about uh, mobility, so how to bring in mobile apps and, and how to uh, uh, make it uh, paperless and, self and more self-service. Uh, how to loop in, although it says ZAS platforms, it's not just ZAS, but how to bring in the next-gen cloud platforms uh, enabled for our uh, uh, for our uh, applications um, and also about uh, uh, e-learning. So this is the uh, accelerator program that I talked about. So basically, we are uh, at the moment uh, working with uh, our in, uh, working with couple of uh, um, startup uh, to do some kind of predictive analysis on cash flow. Uh, the Ida Lab and Zentrio, uh, where is my transport? Is basically a uh, um, 360 degree app that connects. So uh, where am I? What's the parking facilities available? What's my uh, um, transportation uh, options? Can I rent a car? Can I go by public transport? So that's kind of uh, information that it gives. Yeah. Uh, so this is still in uh, um, in in in, uh, uh, in proposal. Let's say that's why I say we, we are still in in, uh, in our radar. So nothing is signed yet, but we are looking forward to work with them. So anyone interested from startups can also reach. Uh, our website is mentioned here, or you can reach me and I can connect to the uh, corresponding uh, program heads if you have a cool idea that would also help us uh, to take us to the next generation. Okay, so enough of this. Uh, uh, so let's, uh, let's go into the use case. So um, what can you take from this uh, short speech? So it's a 20 minute speech. Uh, I think I already used uh, uh, more or less 10 minutes here. So basically I want to start with a uh, very, very simple use case where uh, uh, how self-service uh, analytics actually helped us, or self-service data preparation and data wrangling, data and blending helped us uh, to enable our uh, data lake. Uh, and the second use case is more about uh, a business problem that we will uh, talk about and how uh, self-service en uh, enabled to uh, bring solutions faster. So let's start with the uh, data lake. So this is our conceptual architecture. So we have our trains, which is basically uh, getting all the information, what we, what we call it as system of records. Uh, from this, we try to uh, get this both from on-prem or uh, what we call as wayside, which is basically coming from uh, the train or, or the tracks, uh, is getting ingested into our uh, data lake platform. And this is basically fed into uh, an uh, experimentation or proto prototyping environment, what we call as data science lab. So here we develop models, we check if this works and, and what kind of uh, business value does it bring? Is it, uh, uh, is it good enough to industrialize it now so that it goes back to our system of record uh, and, and uh, produces us uh, uh, value throughout our uh, value chain? So very, very small kind of, a, let's say, um, uh, a Mickey Mouse diagram to just show our high-level conceptual architecture. In terms of layers, uh, so this is how it looks. So we, uh, we have, a, a base from, from on-prem uh, to uh, our data lake platform, it's going to, there is going to be an ingestion layer and then followed by a storage. Uh, as any of uh, architectural uh, principles that we also try to separate our storage from uh, processing, that's why we have it storage and sub uh, processing separately uh, and followed by an inside layer, yeah. So what does the uh, technical uh, um, stack look like? So we uh, used Alteryx and Python to prepare the data before ingestion and why. We will see this uh, in the uh, uh, next slide. Uh, S3 is our core uh, storage uh, layer. 
And then comes the processing, basically Redshift and EMR. So strictly speaking, Redshift is not uh, uh, decoupled from storage, although we primarily focus here more about uh, um, um, uh, using Redshift as an uh, analytical database, and EMR is our uh, uh, is the Hadoop stack. So basically, we we are our our uh, uh, our principle is that we don't build anything. We always try to buy uh, because that's uh, not our core business. So we build trains and not software. So we always go for anything that comes out of the box. Uh, and finally, we have a stack for uh, uh, for Insight, where again we uh, try to use Alteryx and Tableau, which is basically a self-service for business as well as technical users. And then we have a machine learning, primarily focusing on our data science uh, lab environment used by um, data engineers and uh, data scientists. So why? Why did we go for a preparation before ingestion? So um, last year when we started the, or a couple of years when we started the initiative, we made a lot of pilots and then we decided we go with uh, AWS as our uh, core platform, although we didn't, uh, uh, we didn't uh, put aside all the others. Uh, but at the uh, start of this year, when everything was ready, there was a press release that we are going live with our data lake environment and we will go with a pilot for our connected trains. Uh, we had a kind of a roadblock which states, which comes always from security and compliance, right? So this is always the case. Uh, not that this is wrong, but uh, this is an awakening call for us. Uh, just four weeks before go live, we were so told that we had to have uh, some kind of an uh, um, Compliance, uh, we need to follow compliance on uh, data masking and anon anonymization of personal data. So this comes from both uh, workers' council point of view because we cannot have personal data of employees there, which means that uh, there will be uh, some kind of a 360 degree uh, evaluation of, uh, of employees, which is uh, strictly opposing what workers' council, uh, uh, from workers', workers council point of view, which was not our intention yeah, as well. Yeah, uh, the same comes from the EU data privacy, which is not yet uh, um, uh, in alive, but it will come in 2018. So we already was forward looking. Okay, how to make sure that these data privacy requirements are uh, uh, are handled before we ingest data into our data lake. Of course, uh, strictly confidential data, as I said, this is key for our customers as well as for our business. We cannot let anything go away from uh, uh, by uh, to get get hacked by our uh, and uh, lose our so-called uh, uh, proprietary uh, designs and models. So, of course, we have to do for strictly confidential data must be client-side encrypted. And the, the core is not about the technical problem of how to encrypt or uh, how, to, um, how to arrive or how to meet them, but how to, take, uh, how to make it uh, much more, um, uh, how to make it much more uh, transparent for the uh, customers. In this case, the customer is, it could be a, a, a representative from a workers' council or it could be a representative from legal and uh, data privacy uh, uh, departments or it could be just an any, any end user uh, within the uh, company. So how to make this transparent so that we from central IT don't get uh, bogged down by this, that everyone comes to us and says, okay, now can you give me this audit trails, or can you now give me this audit logs? So we don't want to get bogged down with this because we want to proceed with providing the next layers and next uh, upgrading our stack. So how to make this uh, much uh, uh, more giving it to the uh, end users, uh, like a self-service, and this is, this is key uh, for us. So on the um, left side, is more the technical side, which I, as I said, I will not talk about. We already saw the uh, block diagrams, which talked about the storage uh, computation layers. But I, I focus more on the right side. Basically, we have a governance structure uh, all handled by Alteryx, uh, which basically goes into a SQL Server database and uh, SharePoint, which sits on our on-prem. So what is the reason? Because we want to make sure that any data before it goes into cloud is uh, audited and uh, uh, stored a, in our governance framework. Uh, and this is basically, uh, we have a, a data lake client APIs that's, that's uh, basically written in Python, uh, which basically consumes this from uh, at the end of the Altrix workflow, then we take this data and put into our uh, ingestion layer. So what do we do here? Uh, the framework is basically saying, uh, capturing uh, what is the data, what is requested by the uh, customer, uh, what is the assessment, when, when I say assessment, uh, uh, what is the um, classification of this data, uh, is uh, data owners, have, have they approved, uh, who need to uh, get access to this, 
how do we integrate this uh, with our uh, metadata management, uh, classifications of our catalog management, uh, how do we compress, upload, and all this uh, uh, catalog of information needs to be somehow managed, and, uh, uh, and that can be readable later or can be auditable later when someone needs to uh, uh, go through this. Yeah. Uh, and of, of course, then it, it, it should also be uh, scalable so that it's, we, we now start with a very, very limited scope of uh, uh, data, which is basically coming from our wayside. But once we start integrating our core systems that sits on on-prem, on uh, then uh, we need to be able to scale this also as well. Uh, and that's, that's the core of it. Uh, what is the key takeaway? So with, with the uh, data preparation tool, what we were able to do is uh, we were uh, able to get an end-to-end -end, uh, orchestration of the process so that all of this, what we said, uh, can be all bundled together. Uh, we could easily track them uh, at any point. If someone comes and says, okay, what was the data that was moved in uh, last 15 days with this confidentiality, it was easy to provide a report, not by uh, central IT, but uh, someone uh, from the uh, core business or from the compliance as well. Um, moving on to uh, the second. So basically, uh, this use case is more about uh, a business problem. Yeah? So we had a problem uh, where we, we know what is the, our stock in, in, in stores, and we also know what's, what we deliver to the customer. But this is a, a typical manufacturing problem that once your stock moves into your production line, there is no clear visibility. So people are always uh, running around chasing uh, blindfolded because they have no, no clue, okay, what is being now uh, in which production line, what is my uh, cost that is trapped before uh, that is not being delivered to our customer. So this is key because uh, what we found is 80% of our cost was tracked in this uh, production line. And this is a big uh, risk for us uh, when it comes to our cash flow. So we had a, a typical problem, there is nothing new, so we had data quality issues, we had multiple ERP systems, we had more than one standard processes, uh, we had uh, uh, greater granularity issues in our uh, BW, uh, we, we could not uh, do cleaning of data and, and uh, people and business were more looking for an agile and fast running solution or, or else they want to just put in Excel and, and deliver some report which is green, but it's not the report that uh, our president wanted to see. So what did we do? So uh, this is a kind of a, a lab environment. So it's not an industrialized, uh, industrialized solution. So as in the previous talk, someone mentioned. So this is more for our scientists to work with. Yeah. So we take uh, the uh, core ERP systems. Uh, we kind of we we kind of do a, a data preparation and wrangling on enrichment uh, using Altrix. We also did develop some kind of an. Uh, core models uh, using R, but then this could be imported into Altrix to run the end-to-end -end workflows. Uh, and finally, we have to also enrich it with some master data because once it goes back to the business, then they need to be able to see it in their language. Yeah? Uh, and then we, we visualized uh, uh, reports in, in uh, Tableau. So this is the, let's say, the overarching solution that we had in place. But I go into three cases uh, just to show what, has, what was done. So the first is very simple workflow where uh, we, we, in any company, this is the case. There is uh, master data is not harmonized. Uh, it's not maintained in our core uh, ERP systems. There is no standards. Uh, and uh, in case of Bombardier, this, is, uh, this was obvious because we, as a company, grew by acquisitions. So there were always more than one company behind the core labeled company. Yeah? Uh, so what does this mean? So we had to run uh, different workflows. Uh, and to bring all this data into a kind of lab environment to, uh, to harmonize them. And this harmonization could be done if it was self-service by the business themselves and not depend on uh, the IT. Uh, the second problem, again, typical uh, uh, problem in uh, any manufacturing side. So uh, we have a cost allocation problem. So from finance point of view, this was never a problem because finance always had a, a different model for the, uh, uh, to calculate this, uh, which was sitting in a BW, and they were not focused on the granular data. Yeah, but from operational point of view, this is this was very very important uh, to calculate certain KPIs. Yeah, so for example, what is the amount of uh, uh, what was the amount that was spent uh, in painting or repainting? S this kind of information doesn't come from finance. Yeah, so basically we need to go to a level where the data is ma maintained in the core SAP uh, tables. I don't know how many of you uh, know some tables like, uh, like material movement or MSEG, which basically uh, has like millions or sometimes even uh, billions of rows. Yeah? So we have to go to this uh, tables to, uh, to, to, to see how uh, the costs are uh, assigned to a certain uh, products. 
Uh, and in cases where we could not directly assign them, we have to uh, reassign them. We have to create models to reassign them. And these models differ de depending on the business departments. Uh, so this is another key, so where we could define a model and then give it back to the uh, business who could just put them uh, some kind of input and output uh, uh, processing parameters, uh, thresholds, and then say, okay, this is the uh, optimized cost allocation that we could uh, get to. Um, the finally, we had uh, another uh, core problem with uh, uh, building and hierarchy. Based, uh, so this is uh, any, com any, any uh, manufacturing or product-based uh, uh, company will have a, a bill of material, what is basically saying, okay, how does your product break down, or product breakdown structure. Uh, and uh, sometimes this structure was not available when you are producing these goods internally. Yeah? So basically, if you have a... Um, uh, what we call as uh, wheel and axles, it is produced internally, but there is no bill of material because it's just a wheel, but at the end, it has to be also produced. So the, someone has to know how this is done. Uh, and in such cases, we have to build our own uh, uh, hierarchy, to, uh, which is basically coming from material movements. Again, millions of millions of rows. Yeah. So why I highlighted all this is, if the same has to be done in a traditional BIBW, there was an entire dependency on our uh, core IT, which would probably take months or even years to implement this as a project. But we were not uh, uh, interested in like a 100% accurate solution. We were more interested in 80%. Tell us what it is. Yeah? If, even if someone says, okay, 80% of your value uh, of your cost is stuck in somewhere here, then this was a big uh, bonus for our uh, business to, to take some actions on it. So um, we, were, we, we took just raw tables, skipping all the application level. Then we started to uh, process them, like billions of rows, like 500 gigabyte of uh, raw data. We created models based on the inputs from business users, and we uh, gave it back to them uh, to run them uh, uh, with an easy governance model uh, on top of this. I'm I think I'm running out of time, so, but this is the last slide here. Um, so what, is, uh, what was expected and why did we choose Alteryx? Um, so this is an, uh, we were expected uh, to provide an agile prototyping, uh, a prototyping environment. So there was no one uh, uh, willing to say, okay, can now we run a project that goes for two years and then we see what happens. So this was not the case. Uh, speed was a genuine requirement, yeah? So everybody said that we have to crunch a lot of data, but this has to happen in hours and not even in days. So, so this was a, a genuine requirement. Uh, then we have to, because of the, uh, our uh, landscape, it was a kind of a messed up data sources, yeah? So we have to bring them all together, blend them this data, and uh, uh, provide the insights, uh, which is also shareable across our organization. And that's why uh, Altrix Gallery was uh, really helpful to provide a very, very simple governance model that helped us to provide uh, um, such, an, um, uh, such a uh, collaborative and uh, uh, sharing model across our organization. Um, as I said before, our uh, motto is always uh, we go for uh, whenever there is a buy, then we, we buy the solution rather than build on its own, although we are changing now. Uh, because of our uh, data science environment, also with our working with our startups, so we are also trying to build. But then we, when there is minimum customization, then we try to prefer this, which was perfect for us with, uh, uh, with Alteryx. Most important, uh, the license model, because there was no, no need for us to provide a heavy investment cost. So the first use case that I mentioned, if we, we had to go for a traditional uh, catalog management or an uh, ETL or data preparation tool, we would have gone uh, spending uh, at least uh, 500K uh, in cost. But in this case, it was uh, very, very easy. And finally, we had excellent partners. Uh, I don't know if uh, someone from Information Lab is here, but uh, they were really good in, in uh, bringing us on board as well as our uh, uh, end users. Um, there's a lot of materials and blocks available, and uh, the, all the open source models that are available are, works perfectly fine. Uh, you can import them, uh, you can import all the R models into Alteryx, and you can also run them through. So thank you all. Um, I think I'm three minutes or more, but uh, if you want uh, some questions, we can, uh, we can still go through, or do I? Yeah, we, we don't have any time because it's like five minutes the next talk, so. Okay, so but, but, but you're here. I'm um, here, so I can, I, can, I can stay here outside and if anybody if you wants to speak in person to Gopi, thank you very much, Gopi. Give him a big applause, thank you.